I have created a monster. Hello everyone, we're back and we're working on the horror game again. So I loaded up the original project file and was running away from the base chase AI. And I thought it was about time we updated the model from the default Unreal Engine mannequin. I feel like the humanoid direction was taking away from the alone, liminal space feeling anyways, so I went down a more Lovecraftian route. I mean, what's more Cthulhu-inspired than a giant floating mass of tentacles? I wouldn't have been able to do this effect if it weren't for this guy. Special thanks to FXology, I'll link his tutorial in the description if you want to try this effect out for yourself. It's a Niagara system that was really well put together, so uh, I tried to follow along. All right. <clears throat> Create an empty system, finish, Niagara system, underscore, tentacles. Boom. I'm gonna open that. We got E, empty, emitter, emitter update, burst. Let's get 10 of them. Initialize particle, uniform, five. to position. Simulation position. Make vector function. Yeah. I know exactly what's going on. Turn normalize execution index. And we'll scale it up to 100. Spawn burst instantaneous. Spawn count 11. Ribbon renderer. New material. that up to the base color. Ribbon renderer. Shape. Tube. Haha. Well, ain't that something. Eight. Curve. I do believe that's a float from curve. Yep. Return normalized execution index. I know what all of these words mean. Haha. -ha. Particle state, kill particles when, uncheck that, once. Mm-hmm. It's starting to look like a thing. Loop duration mode. Whoops. Checked. Uh, I don't think that's it. What if I do this one? Random range vector. ba 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 ba, -ba. And why is this not working? Please? We need a scratch pad module. What? Later. Much later. Apply. Well, it's something. And it crashed. Okay, not good. Coherence. Holy shit. And that's that. I hope you're still with me. After enough trial and error, somehow I'd managed to put together a particle system, so I attached 12 of them to a top-down character controller and ran it around. Results are pretty cool. I think it turned out. We can definitely move forward with this. It's gonna work great as a creature. For right now, I've been referring to it as the Tangle. So, making particle effects can be hard, but 3D animation doesn't have to be. I'm excited to announce since my video on animating a first-person horror shot with the program Cascadeur, their people reached out to sponsor the channel. If you haven't heard of Cascadeur, I'm really excited to promote it. It's an AI-assisted keyframe animation program with powerful auto-posing. 
and makes natural 3D animation super achievable with auto physics solutions. I had literally never made a 3D animation before this program, and it really streamlined the whole process and allowed me to get into it, and I use it for all my 3D animation needs now. You can try it out for free, and for a limited time, using my link in the description, get 15% off of your order of Cascader Professional. This has unlimited frames and full access to Cascader's animation pipeline. It's the best way I've found to animate your 3D characters. Use my link in the description and code 1WQHB8 to get 15% off Cascader and support the channel. And now onto the rest of the video. Let's make this guy functional. In the same way I did for the top-down character, I attached the particle effects of the tangle to our AI and let it move around the map. Eventually I'm going to want to replace this AI with something of my own built from the ground up. But for now, to fake some more complex behavior, we're going to leverage the power of splines. So this is going to be a quicker segment. I was going about making my own spline path follow system, which you can see working here. But I ran into the issue where I could only really operate with one spline in a level at a time, and if I wanted to create multiple creatures following different splines at once, it would quickly become error central. So for the sake of time, I just lifted this system from this template pack. Like with everything, links in the description. This template pack works pretty great out of the box, so here's how to use it. You can add in one of these spline blueprints, and by holding Alt and moving these control points along, you can drag out a smooth path like you're working with a pen tool. With that 3D path drawn out to our liking, you just slap this follow spline component onto just about any object. Make sure that object is set to movable, and then you can use the eyedropper tool to actually select the spline. And just like that, off it goes. This is a feature I definitely like to see implemented by default into the engine. It's a system with a lot of use cases, but for now, this template's gonna work great. When I ported the spline follow function over to the main project, it suddenly stopped working. So I just disconnected the main pin from all the stuff that was causing errors, recompiled, and acted like none of the broken code existed. Anyways, with that in the main project, I made a little pawn of our Niagara particle effect systems to make up Squilliam here, and added the spline follow function to it. This uh, worked a charm. Well, for the most part. You can imagine how through event triggers we could spawn the creatures along splines for quote-unquote scripted sequences and more complex movements. So we have our particle effect creature, it can chase us, and we can have it follow splines. All that's left is making it kill us. To handle death in this game, I wanted a trigger that caused the player to ragdoll, disable the control input, fade to black, and then reload the level. So I found a bunch of tutorials on the various subjects and Frankenstein together a system. Here's how it worked. First things first, being all tutorial mode here, we're going to open up the third person character blueprint to set up a new function. This is going to call that ragdoll effect. Within this function, we'll add a set simulate physics and disable movement node, just like so. And now I create a new blueprint actor. This guy is going to work as the actual death trigger. Opening this up, we're going to add in a box collider and just call it collider. And under this event graph, we'll call that ragdoll function from the event auto begin overlap node. So that way, when the player overlaps with the trigger, you guessed it, it calls the function. So from event auto begin overlap, we cast to the third person character, like so. And from this, we can now get the ragdoll function. That's it. So now over back in the character blueprint, we set the collision mode to block all dynamic and be sure to tick simulate physics there. 
So in testing, what this amounts to at this point is a trigger that essentially knocks you over. That's a good start. Now let's go about fading the screen to black. So back in the trigger blueprint, moving on from the ragdoll event, we add in a get player camera manager node. And with that there, we can then hook up a start camera fade node. In there, we're gonna go ahead and adjust the to and from alpha values, and this determines the length of the fade. And then we'll take this and run it through a delay node so that it begins fading about a quarter of a second after the ragdoll event. To hold the fade, hop back into the blueprint and tick hold when finished. All of these elements put together so far turn out looking like this. All right, it's officially the first time. Tangle will kill someone. You, beast. Incredible. Okay, we're almost there. Last thing to do is just add a respawn system. We're gonna do this by opening up that blueprint one more time and running another delay node from the screen fade node. From that, we connect up a get current level name and open level by name nodes and connect those two together. And that's about as basic as it gets because that's all there is to that. We have our kill system all set up. If I die. Yes! <laughs> oh, rad. Okay, super cool. We have a death and respawn system. So then I just put it all together in the demo level. I think it's a really cool effect. We made it, and the project was really satisfying. I'm slowly figuring out the whole blueprint thing. We've got a great tool set now for adding this creature into gameplay. It was quite a bit to condense down into, uh, where are we at, just about 13 minutes, but I'm really excited to be sharing these results with you guys. I hope you picked up some good inspiration along the way. Up next, I'm gonna need to build some proper levels for this thing and add some sounds, so let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And for those still watching, I want to say a huge, huge thank you for 3,000 subscribers. I'm racking my brain on what to do for the occasion, so stay tuned for that. Cheers to everyone who has shown such massive support, or anyone who's just finding the channel now. I can't express my gratitude enough. I hope you've enjoyed this progress on the horror game. Leave a like and subscribe if you can, and I'll see you all in the next one.